Hello guys, Furball the Hammy, your friendly neighborhood hamster, is back again for another Hypixel Skyblock video. Today's video will be based on the best support builds for Hypixel Skyblock dungeons. As you can see from the sneak peek of dungeons on Jaya Varman's Twitter page and seeing how he took 600 damage in one hit, support members will be more than necessary to support your teammates who are both on damage and tank builds. So with that, let's begin with the support builds for the day. And also, I will be announcing the ultimate best sets for dungeons for offensive, defensive and support builds across all three videos to wrap up the best builds for dungeons. And afterwards, actually be making some Hearthstone videos. Hearthstone and Minecraft will be the focus on my channel in the very near future. So do stay tuned for Hearthstone content. Also, for you budget players out there, support classes tend to have the cheapest builds. Well, it's not entirely budget cause you still need overflux for maximum heals, but bear in mind that mana flux can substitute overflux any day of the week. So if you want budget, support definitely is the most budget out of the damage tank and support roles. So with that, time is money and let's get on to the video. Number 1. Cryomancer Do you enjoy slowing your enemies down to a halt, allowing your team to easily clean up enemies while they are slowed and to buy your team time? If so, this build is for you. This build is made by me and I take full ownership of it, so yeah. It is kind of an intriguing build and a very unique support build in my opinion. So in order to run the Cryomancer build, you need Wise Dragon Armor, a Frozen Scythe, a Silk Edge Sword, a Leaping Sword, and a Scorpion Bow, along with a Legendary Sheep Head. Simply put, the strategy is to just stun and slow enemies. If you want to freeze multiple enemies from a range, use the Frozen Scythe as it shoots out a beam of ice slowing enemies and dealing 100 damage which will get multiplied by magic damage should magic damage be fixed. Your second slow option will be the Scorpion Bow. Fun fact, its ability Stinger slows enemies down and deals 35 times of your strength as damage per second for 6 seconds, which when paired with Wise Dragon's high mana allowing you to spam this ability, then if you choose to reforge all your talismans to strong or forceful, you can deal some decent damage although you are still mainly a support class. Use the Scorpion Bow ability if you are facing single enemies with high HP and damage and you want to keep at a good distance from enemies while slowing them down to buy your allies more time. Now moving on to the stun options, Leaping Sword and Silk Edge Sword. Because both swords have a cooldown of 1 second on their abilities, if you carry two swords, you can use both in conjunction with one another, meaning you can spam the ability and chain the stuns. You want to use your stun on enemies which can deal high damage as stunning enemies will leave them unable to attack entirely, giving your allies a chance to get up close and personal to the enemy to kill them or to simply buy your team time to heal. The legendary sheep pet is for more mana in dungeons obviously which allows you to use more of these abilities and most importantly allowing you to chain your stuns to make sure your enemies are kept in check. Furthermore, if magic damage does get fixed, being able to change these stun abilities will also deal heavy damage to enemies since you are in wise dragon armor and because of that, you will have high magic damage. And now moving on to the second support build for today, known as the Undying Cleric. Are you a naturally talented healer who enjoys just healing your enemies to make them stay immortal? If that is the case, this is the build for you. Do you also hate healers who die on the battlefield due to their squishiness? If so, this build gives the cleric a high survivability and support powers. In order to run this build, you need perfect 12 plus a spirit mask or a reaper mask, along with the ornate zombie sword, a zombie sword, a wand of restoration, an overflux power orb, a weird tuba, and an endstone sword, along with an epic phoenix pet. There aren't much healing options in Skyblock, but the ornate zombie sword and the zombie sword are alternate abilities, correct me if I'm wrong, and should be able to use in conjunction with one another so you can maximize the healing from this setup. However, if you fear being easily killed, I recommend choosing the perfect 12 setup. After all, when mobs do 700 damage per hit, you probably want to make sure that you don't die as a support of the team. The strategy is simple. Use your ornate zombie sword and regular zombie sword to heal your allies when they are low. Save the wand of restoration for your own personal healing rather than use the zombie sword healing for your own personal use, since you want to save the zombie sword charges for your teammates. The Phoenix Pet ensures maximum survivability should you get hit by a lethal attack, and the Spirit Mask serves as a second protective measure should you accidentally die two times in a short period. Although the Reaper Mask is still amazing and can give you survivability to the extent of a Spirit Mask. 
Follow this strategy and back it up with an end stone sword. Should you need to get away from a lethal situation, you should most likely not die with this setup. Because if you still die with this setup, yeah, you have three things that allow you to literally escape death. The beauty of this setup is that it allows a support to be more aggressive in the front lines and to be more of a tank and a support build due to the amount of lethal protections provided, such as the Phoenix Pet, the Spirit Mask, and the Endstone Sword. You can buy time for your allies in a pinch with the Endstone Sword and even lead the charge into battle with invincibility. Use the weird tuba and the Overflux power up if you have extra mana to boost everyone's healing and offenses, but that's about it. And now, moving on for the final class of the day, which is the fusion class of tank, damage, and support, the jack of all trades and the master of none, also known as the paladin class. Instead of healing your allies, do you prefer to buff their strength instead? Do you prefer a more proactive support role to help the team and lead the charge even as a support? Because if this is what you desire, this is certainly your class. In order to run the paladin class, you need the wise dragon armor or perfect 12, along with a weird tuba, edible mace, 50 mil midas, overflux power orb, and stone sword, and a legendary parrot. The strategy is simple. You lead the charge and you are also a semi-tank and even a semi-damage build should you decide to run a 50 mil midas. Make use of the weird tuba before engaging, giving everyone superior speed and damage. Place down the overflux power up in the middle of the dungeon and use your edible mace to target animals to lower their damage to make your team take less damage against animals. And when your team has to fall back when they are low, use the endstone sword to become invincible and to have high damage reduction from enemies and to buy the aggro of enemies when necessary for a few seconds, which can be crucial for your team. This build is a semi-tank build but allowing you to lead the charge with superior speed, damage and with an invincibility option in a pinch for defense. The legendary parrot pet was chosen here to push the archetype of granting your allies even more damage, as the legendary parrot pet when maxed adds 30 strength to all allies in a whopping 20 block radius, as if your team did not have enough strength, if you do decide to run Rise Dragon Armor, you may have additional mana to run an ornate zombie sword for healing, but personally I prefer running the perfect 12 for the paladin build, mainly due to the fact that when you are going to be a support who is in the heat of battle, so being squishy might not be a trade off you want to take as compared to the cryomancer class and the cleric class. Also, this build allows you to protect your allies from true damage should animals such as wolves deal true damage in dungeons since we don't know what else dungeons have. This setup is also amazing if there are animals in dungeons, which allows you to focus down animals and make them weak with your edible mace, protecting your allies from extra damage and to boost everyone's offenses by a huge amount. Namely, 40 strength from the parrot pet, 30 strength from the weird tuba, and 25 strength from overflux, which in total gives a huge plus 95 strength buff. No jokes. It may be viable to boost the damage of the defensive dungeon party build with 3 or more tanks, or this build can also be used alongside with a full damage team targeted at killing mobs as quickly and as swiftly as possible, in order to take as little damage as possible. The paladin build gives everyone basically a free wood singularity to their swords, it literally gives everyone plus 95 strength because of the parrot pet, and because of that, I feel like the Paladin build will be the most versatile build to put into any dungeon team because it is able to play the role of a tank and it can also play a tiny role with damage and it can also play the role as being a support. Basically, a support that buffs strength as well as to help reduce damage from enemies. So hence, I personally really like the Paladin build as well as the Cryomancer build. And the next video will be on what builds I personally would run for dungeons and to finalize what builds I think are best out of all the videos I have made. So with that, this is Furball the Hammy, your friendly neighborhood hamster, signing out.